the songs. So now uh, we would like to uh, uh, to call our uh, our our main speaker, uh, Father Ken Lau. Uh, so again, the, the talk is Lenten Recollection, uh, Mercy, What God Gives and What God Requires. Uh, let me give you a background to uh, Father Ken. So uh, this is from the, from the YouTube. <laughs> so uh, he was born and raised in the Philippines, uh, where he obtained an engineering and master's degree in engineering. Woo! That's pretty strong. Um, uh, during the university years, Father Ken experienced a powerful conversion during a charismatic prayer meeting. Uh, he worked in China for several years, and it was during 2006 where he got his call to the priesthood. So before that, Father, Ke Father Ken came to Canada in 2008. Uh, and at the same year, he joined the Companions of the Cross. Um, and then, on August 15, Father Ken was obtained for the priesthood no, no, on June 6, June 6, 2015. So it's almost like seven years later. Wow, that took that long. <laughs> uh, he spent his first two years as associate pastor at St. Timothy Catholic Church in Toronto. He was then assigned to be the pastoral administrator at Holy Trinity Pastoral Unity in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He is currently the associate pastor at St. Mary's Paris here in Ottawa. Uh, Father Ken loves spending time in the great outdoors. Uh, in 2020, Father Ken launched his online ministry in his YouTube channel. Uh, so if you don't already have it, uh, follow Father Ken on YouTube. So uh, without further ado, I would like to call Father Ken. Start with a prayer. Okay, just pray for anointing in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we praise you. We bless you. We thank you, O Lord. We just ask, Lord, for a special anointing uh, upon us tonight. Lord, just, just anoint my words, Lord, and just anoint everything tonight, Lord. And uh, may I be able to give your words to, to your people as we really prepare for, 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 for this holy week. We ask, Lord, that you uh, predispose the heart of the people who are here tonight and also those who are watching online that they would be able to hear your word, not my word, and also be able to respond to that word. Grant me the grace right now to celebrate, uh, uh, grant me the grace right now to be able to uh, give this talk for your great and for also for the salvation of souls. Uh, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so thank you for inviting me to come and uh, give this Lenten recollection. Uh, it really helped me prepare myself also for, uh, for Holy Week. And um, so I was given a choice of what topic to give, and I, and I chose mercy, okay? what God gives and what God requires. Uh, first, maybe I'll just sh share a little about myself. Uh, aside from the introduction, I have several names. Um, I remember when I was a seminarian, in, uh, for those who are in the Philippines, if you're a seminarian, you call the seminarian brother, right? Brother. And so they started calling me Brother Kenneth, but it's kind of too long. So they shortened it. They made it Bro Ken. <laughs> so they started calling me broken when I was a seminarian. <laughs> so I'm still broken, okay? <laughs> As you all are, don't laugh. <laughs> we all are broken. And uh, so when I became a uh, ordained as a deacon, they started calling me D. Ken. So they used my name again, D. Ken. <laughs> so somebody asked me, oh, so uh, D. Ken, if you become a priest, what will we call you? Somebody came up with Free Ken. <laughs> that's, that's how I got my other name, Free Ken, and then I told them, just add awesome after that, so it's Free Ken Awesome. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say handsome, you know. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, I'd just like to share a little uh, about my testimony. I came from a middle-class uh, uh, Chinese family in the Philippines. Uh, so, uh, as, as you know, uh, most of the ch Chinese families, they're kind of not expressive. Uh, so I know in my head that my parents love me. They provided for my education food, shelter, clothing, okay? 
but they were not, they were, they, they were not expressive. And there were a lot of like infightings uh, uh, in the house there. So I grew up, I don't know, not, not, not really experiencing their love. And because of that, I look for love outside. Okay? I look at love in, uh, uh, at the wrong places. That's why I could say that uh, I, I have a troubled past. Okay? Uh, maybe not the typical testimony of an immaculate past from, uh, of, a, of a priest. I have a troubled past. And uh, uh, I was looking for love from drinking. I was drinking a lot of alcohol, partying. I would party like five out of seven days in a week. I had two days off uh, from partying. <laughs> and just surrounded with, you know, with women and uh, entering into sinful relationship there. And uh, if I could describe my life, it's like a donut. Kids, where's where the kids? They left. <laughs> <laughs> so the kid, uh, you love donuts, right? Anyone, anyone who loves donut here? That's my life, donut. Okay, on the outside, it was full of like those sprinkles. Uh, so people, when they see me, you know, I I uh, I like partying and uh, I love lo lots of friends. On the outside, I look very happy, but on the inside, there's a big, big hole, and I was really very empty. And I, I could say I was living a very sinful lifestyle. And because of that, uh, I wasn't experiencing peace and joy, only pleasure, right? And, uh, and because of that, I, I don't know, uh, I, 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 grew, uh, I studied in a Catholic school uh, in the Philippines, have had religion classes, learned about God is love, God is merciful, but really didn't experience that love. In fact, I know, I remember, when I would go to confession, I would confess the same sin again and again every week. Coming out of confession, thinking that I'm still not forgiven. Okay? I know that's not God's problem. It's my problem. I know God is merciful, and yet I'm not experiencing the mercy of God. And it's only true, I'll share with you, when did I start experiencing the love and the mercy of God, okay? So the first time I experienced the, the love and the mercy of God when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I attended a Life in the Spirit seminar uh, on my last year of university, okay? And I remember very clearly when I was prayed over for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I just started to cry. I, I, just start, I, just, I was just experiencing in a very powerful way the love of God in my life. And, and at first, I couldn't, uh, I, I, I couldn't believe it that God could love me despite my sinfulness. And I, I, I had an image of God the Father really embracing me, and I couldn't just stop, I couldn't stop crying. I was crying like a crybaby. It was too embarrassing. You know, I was uh, projecting this macho image, and yet when I was being uh, prayed over, I, I kept on crying. I couldn't stop. I don't know. I, I didn't plan it, of course. <laughs> but I just experiencing the love and the mercy of God. So the second one was reading the diary of St. Faustina. Okay? Just, just reading the diary of St. Faustina. And uh, it's so powerful, right? How, how many of you have read the diary of St. Faustina? It's beautiful. If you want to know more about the mercy of God, Read this diary of St. Faustina. And in the diary of St. Faustina, I read this and I really marked it down. It's from section 598. So I'll be sharing some of the quotes from the diary. Section 598, it says, All you souls, this is St. Faustina writing, All you souls praise the Lord's mercy by trusting in His mercy all your life and especially at the hour of your death. And fear nothing. Fear nothing, dear soul. Whoever you are, the greater the sinner, the greater the right to your mercy, O oh Lord. When I, when I read this, I felt so much consolation because I'm a great sinner. I have hope. <laughs> okay? So, so that's the second one, the Diary of St. Faustina. The third one is through the sacrament of 
reconciliation. I don't know, after being baptized by the Holy Spirit and, uh, and experiencing uh, the Father's love, whenever I would go to, 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 to the sacrament of reconciliation, uh, I would just experience the mercy of the Lord. And before the priest, uh, I'm glad I had uh, several very good understanding and compassionate priests uh, who would give me good counsel and just love me, like the, the letting me experience the Father's love. And I would just uh, cry also during the sacrament of reconciliation and just experiencing the mercy of God. Now, I'm sure all of you are very familiar with this parable of the prodigal son, especially for me, priest, every year. I, I would read it so, so many times, give, gave homily about it. But every time I would meditate on it, the Lord will give me some new insight. And I hope you get some new insight from this parable of the prodigal son. As you know, the younger son asked for his inheritance. And uh, so when he got the inheritance, he left, right? He, he, he wasted the money uh, in reckless living. Okay? There was a famine, and he ended up taking care of pigs. Yes, the Jews, for the pig, uh, taking care of, the pigs are unclean to them. So he was kind of, he really hit rock bottom, the prodigal son. Okay? And then what happened there is, this is the, 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 the moment of grace. He came to his senses. Right? It says there, he came to his senses. He said, oh, uh, the hard servant of my father would eat better than me. Okay? And, and he said there that, uh, uh, okay, so that's, you see here, the, the, the younger son uh, taking care of the pigs. And, uh, and, and he said that he wanted to go back because the, the hard servants there are eating better. So you see here, it was an imperfect repentance from the younger son. Okay? He's not really truly sorry. He just wants to eat better, <laughs> right? And, and also, he said that uh, he, he was really afraid that his father will not forgive him totally, okay? That's why he said, uh, he said that I am no longer fit. He's, he's already rehearsing what he's going to tell his father. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers, okay? And uh, as we know, uh, when he was still long way home, the father saw him from afar. And the father run. The father run. You know, during that time, especially being the head of the family, running is embarrassing, okay? The, the head of the family don't run. But he run. Why did he run? Huh? Yeah. But I think he ran because he was afraid that his son would change his mind. That's why he ran. He forgot about what people would think about him. All, all he wants is to let his, ex, his son experience the mercy the love coming from him. That's why he embraced him. He kissed him. Right? He didn't even uh, give him the chance to do what he, re what, what he was planning to say. You see the mercy of the father? The love, the unconditional love of this father. And uh, he asked the servants to uh, to uh, put robe, you know, because of course nakedness is a form of shame, right? He's being clothed again. He's being given the ring, the ring of authority of being a son, and also the sandals. The sandals, the slaves wear, wear nothing. They're barefoot. But for sons, they wear sandals. So his identity as son is being given back uh, uh, to him. And uh, 
And of course, he threw up a party, right? To, uh, the, the, uh, he, he organized a party for the arrival of his uh, younger son because he once was lost, but is now found. He once was dead, is now back alive. And maybe some of us or many of us could relate with the prodigal son. Maybe we've done grave sin, shameful sins, scandalous sin. Maybe we've committed sin again and again and again, went to confession every week, com confessing the same sin. And you think that it's impossible for God to forgive you. You're doubting the mercy of God. Okay? Pope Francis wrote about this parable. I'll just share this with you. The parable em emphasizes not only the experience of sin and forgiveness, but also the way in which forgiveness re reaches the person who has done wrong. The text say says, while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. The son was expecting a punishment, a justice that at most could have given him the place of one of the servants. But he finds himself wrapped in his father's embrace. Tenderness is something greater than the logic of the world. It is an, an unexpected way of doing justice. That is why we must never forget that God is not frightened by our sins. He's not frightened by our sins. Let us fix this clearly in our minds. God is not frightened by our sins. He is greater than our sins. He is the Father. He is love. Okay? He is tender. He's not frightened by our sins, our mistakes, our slip-ups, but He is frightened by the closure of our hearts. This, yes, this makes Him suffer he is frightened by our lack of faith in his love. There is great tenderness in the experience of God's love. Okay? So I hope you meditate on that. God is not frightened of our sins. God is frightened of our lack of faith in his mercy. Okay? And Jesus also, in the diary of St. Faustina, section 300, Confirm that. He said, Oh, how much I am hurt by a soul's distrust. Such a soul professes that I am holy and just, but does not believe that I am mercy and does not trust in my goodness. Even the devils believe in my justice, but do not glorify my goodness. My heart rejoices in this title of mercy. That's why we have a very nice image here of the divine mercy. Why are there words there at the bottom, Jesus, I trust in you? It is to remind us, to remind us, because we easily forget, we doubt. We doubt the mercy of God. That's why it's written there, Jesus, I trust trust in you. Okay? Remember, memorize. It's easy to memorize, right? How many words? Jesus, I trust in you. Five words. Okay? All your life, try to remember these five words. And on your deathbed, if you couldn't pray any prayers, just say this prayer. Jesus, I trust in you. Okay? Because that's what hurt Jesus most. Not our sins. It is our distrust in his mercy. Okay? Now, that's why I, uh, I, I really encourage you, for those who haven't been to confession for, 
for so long. Um, as I've said, I, I, I've shared with you my powerful experience in, in, in doing confession, but also in hearing confession. I've been a priest now for seven years, and I don't know, one of the favorite things that I, I like to do is to hear confession. Because, I don't know, in, in the confessional box there, the presence of the Lord is there. Just, just today, a person who hasn't been to confession for 30 years, okay? he went to confession, big guy, knelt down, just started to cry. And I know it is the Lord's presence. That's why this person is crying. The, this, this, this man is being touched by Jesus. And all I could tell him is that, welcome home. Welcome back. You're the prodigal son. The father is embracing you now. And he just started to cry, continued crying. Okay? And uh, so the sacrament of confession is the fountain of mercy. Okay? And uh, in the diary of uh, St. Faustina, in section 1602, in Faustina wrote, Today the Lord said to me, Daughter, when you go to confession to this fountain of my mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul and ennobles it. Every time you go to confession, immerse yourself entirely in my mercy with great trust so that I may pour the bounty of my grace upon your soul. When you approach the confessional, notice that I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act in your soul. Here, the mystery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Tell souls that from this fount of mercy Souls draw graces solely with the vessel of trust. We receive this grace with the vessel of trust. So if you go to the confessional without trusting in the mercy of the Lord, you come out without receiving any grace. It's with the vessel of trust that you receive this grace. Okay? Uh, if their trust is great, there is no limit to my generosity. The torrent of grace inundates humble souls. The proud remain always in poverty and misery because my grace turns away from them to humble souls. Okay? So we need to be properly disposed. As we, as we go and receive any sacrament, we need to be properly disposed. We need to prepare ourselves. Don't, don't go to the confession and then leaving, oh, God, God hasn't forgiven me. Some people, some people will be like that. They, 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 they couldn't think that God could forgive them. Okay? So, so it's very important. Remember, the sacrament of reconciliation is the fountain of mercy. Now, this mercy is given to us not for our own sake. Okay? That's why our, the title of this Lenten recollection is Mercy, What God Gives and What God Requires. And the reason why it's not just for us, it's because we need to share it with other people. And the, the scripture passage is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, Forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Okay? If you're struggling to forgive, try to, to remember this verse. And many, many people struggle to forgive. Even practicing Christians, practicing Catholics, are, are, are struggling to forgive. Okay? And, and, and why? 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 Why are we struggling to forgive? You know, and it's not easy, right? It's not easy. If it's easy, then nobody would struggle. It's not easy. In fact, 
what the Lord is calling us to do to be merciful to others is not natural. It is supernatural. There's a saying, to err is human, to forgive is divine. Okay? Okay, so uh, now I'd just like to share with you another parable. It's the parable of the unforgiving servant. It's from Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 35. There was this servant who owed this master 10,000 talents, or equivalent to 15 years of salary. So uh, an average salary, it could come up with 1 million US dollar, or maybe 1.2 million Canadian dollar. That's a lot of money, okay? Because he couldn't pay back, the master said, sell him and also his wife and children. Okay? And he begged. He begged. And then the ma- and then uh, the, the, this, this, uh, uh, this, this servant uh, begged that you know, he will be forgiven of his debt, and the master forgave him. The master forgave him. Now, when he went out, he saw somebody who owed him less money. Okay? It's 100 denarii, or 100 days of wages. Average salary, it's like 13,000 US dollar. You know, compute that to Canadian. Okay? 13,000 compared to 1 million, that's penny. Why? Why couldn't he forgive the debt of this fellow's servant? My, my, my thinking is because he couldn't accept that he has been forgiven by his master. He wants to get back all the money that other people owes him so that he could pay back his master. You see, this servant hasn't experienced the mercy of his master. And because he hasn't experienced the mercy of his master, he couldn't give that mercy to others. Because that's a principle, right? You can't give what you you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. He hasn't experienced the mercy. That's why he couldn't give that mercy. Okay? And, uh, and the, the thing is, it says there, in anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should repay all that he owed. That is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Okay? Why, why do we need to forgive? Because of this. What it says there, right? It says, you will be uh, put to jail. Unforgiveness to others puts us in prison where we are oppressed and tormented. With a spirit of resentment, with a spirit of unforgiveness, with a spirit of anger. You're being tormented. When you wake up, that's what you think. Before you sleep, that's what you think. When you have nightmares, that's what you dreamt of. (laughs) You're being tormented. (laughs) Okay? So that's why we need to forgive. And, and, And this is the commandment of the Lord, right? So how could we grow in being merciful? First, it's a commandment. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. From Luke chapter 6, verse 36. St. Faustina, also in her diary, wrote this also. Then I heard the words, I am glad you behave like my true daughter. Be always merciful as I am merciful. Love everyone out of love for me, even your greatest enemies. Even your greatest enemies, so that my mercy may be fully reflected in your heart. So that's from section 1695. Okay? So we're called to be mirrors. We're called to reflect upon the mercy of God through us that other people would experience that mercy. Okay? So just as we're the, the mirror, we're not the source. Right? 
Just like a mirror, if there's a light, if the sun, the sun is the source that, that goes through the mirror and then it reflects. It's the same. Jesus is the source of mercy. That's why we need to experience the mercy of God so that we'll be able to share that mercy to others. Okay? Now, I'm sure you're very familiar with this. Uh, you know, seeing the speck in other people's eyes and you don't see the log in your own eyes, that's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 4 to 5. Okay? Now, I want to use this as um, an image. Okay? Whenever you're having a problem forgiving others, it is because you see the log in their eyes and you see just a speck in your own eye. For you to be able to forgive, you need to see the log in your eyes and to just see the speck in other people's eyes. Because as long as you see the log in their eyes, you won't forgive them. You won't forgive them. You need to see what's your part. Maybe some of you would ask, Oh, Father, I've been abused when I was, when I was young. What, what's, what was my role there? Well, 20, 30 years, that, that happened 30 years, 40 years ago, you're still resenting that person. That's your part. Okay? We need to see the log in our eyes. In every conflict, sometimes we always see the fault of others, and we don't see our faults. That's why we hold on to that grudge. We need to see what's our part. What wrong did I do? Okay? So, so remember, remember that image. Now, for us also to grow in, in, in forgiveness, I'd just like to share with you five lies about forgiveness. The first one is, forgiveness means lowering my defenses so that I will be hurt again. Okay? So what happened there is that I'm going to hold on to this unforgiveness because this will protect me from being hurt again. That's a lie. Okay? The second lie is that forgiveness means condoning what happened. Oh, it's okay. Oh, no, it's okay. What happened? It's okay. No? You need to acknowledge that it, it was harmful. You need to acknowledge that it hurt you. You need to acknowledge what happened. So it's not, just con it's not condoning what happened. The third is that forgiveness presupposes I must have hard feelings toward the one who hurt me. Okay? Now, for us Christians, we have this tendency to, to minimize the harm that has been done to us. No, it's okay. No, yeah. It's okay. No, it's okay. We also, make, we also need to ten, have this tendency to make excuses. Oh, he's having a bad day. That's why he hit me. <laughs> right? We tend to minimize and we tend to make excuses. That's why we don't have that. We suppress that hard feeling. But it's there. It's buried there. And if it's not going to come out, it's, it's going to come out in a harmful way. Maybe when you go home, when you see your cat, you hit that cat. <laughs> Comes out with that, right? So, okay. The fourth one is forgiveness is synonymous to reconciliation. Reconciliation is not a requirement, okay? It's not a requirement. The, the fifth one is, I need to feel like forgiving. This is the most common lie. I don't feel it. That's why I can't forgive this person. Right? But forgiveness is not, it's not a feeling. It's an act of the will. You choose to do so with the help of God. Okay? So those are five lies of forgiveness. Okay? 
So why forgive? Why forgive? Um, it's, you see there a, a, a clenched fist, right? Could you have a clenched fist? Could, could you make a clenched fist? Don't open it, huh? Clenched fist. I'm going to give you this key. Will you be able to receive it? I'm driving a Porsche. <laughs> okay. So if your, if your fist is clenched, that's the sign of unforgiveness, right? You're holding resentment. You're having anger towards that person. It's like you want to hit that person or strangle that person. That's why you have this clenched fist. But if you have this clenched fist, you won't be able to receive what God wants to give you because your, your hands are closed. You need to let go. Let go of unforgiveness and be able to forgive. That's why it says there in Luke chapter 6, verse 14, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. That's why when you can't forgive, you won't be able to receive the forgiveness of God. It's not because God doesn't want to forgive you. God is merciful, but you reject that mercy. Right? So why do we need to forgive? Another reason why we need to forgive is holding resentment is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person would die. Resentment, hold, I'll repeat it again. <laughs> Holding resentment is drinking poison. You're drinking your, the poison, hoping that the other person would die. <laughs> okay? So, so, so that's why we need, we need to let go of resentment. Now, in diary uh, section 390, it says there, he who knows how to forgive prepares himself for himself many graces from God. As often as I look upon the cross, so often will I forgive with all my heart. Whenever you see the cross, always remember Jesus said in the cross, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. That's the source of mercy. Whenever you're struggling, you gaze upon the cross and ask for that grace. Lord, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to forgive. Give me that grace to be able to forgive. Okay? So tonight, it's not just about head knowledge about what mercy is about. Okay? Let's just take some time if you could play some maybe. Uh, uh, it's okay. So right now, I just want, to clo want you to close your eyes and we will invoke the Holy Spirit to descend upon, upon all of you right now to reveal the people that you are struggling to forgive. Okay, so just, let's, let's, let's close your eyes. Come, Holy Spirit, right now. Come. Come, Holy Spirit, with your love, with your power, with all the graces that come from on high. We just ask, Lord, for, for a spirit of revelation right now. Come, Holy Spirit, reveal. Reveal to everyone here who are struggling to forgive. Reveal the people. Reveal their faces. Reveal what they've said. Reveal what they have done. Let them experience again the hurt that I've experienced from these people. Come, Holy Spirit, right now. Come. Spirit of revelation. Reveal. Reveal the people. One by one, Lord Jesus. And I want you to repeat after me, okay? There's, there is really power in the name of Jesus, we saw how the apostles, after Jesus ascended to heaven, they were curing the sick in Jesus' name. There's power. The same power that would heal the sick, that would raise the dead back to life, this is the same power 
that we are invoking whenever we say, in Jesus' name. Okay? So repeat after me, in the name of Jesus. You don't need to say the names, okay? Uh, just, just in your head. I choose to forgive. Think of these people. Okay? Just think of these people. You don't need to say the names. In the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive for what they did to you or for what they said to you. Okay? So we'll just, just do like that. We'll, we'll, we'll do a couple of uh, uh, rounds of this, you know, as you remember. Uh, any, any, any people that God will reveal to you through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive for In the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive for In the name of Jesus, I choose to forgive for The Lord Jesus, I just ask in the power of your holy name right now. I just want to break any chains. Just break any chains right now. Bondage of unforgiveness. Bondage of resentment. Bondage of fear. Bondage of unforgiveness. Lord, in your most holy name, Break this bandage, Lord. In your most holy name, we ask, Lord, for the spirit, all the spirit that are not of yours, spirit of resentment, spirit of unforgiveness, spirit of anger, spirit of hatred towards people for what they've done to us. I command in Jesus' name for the spirit to leave and to be put at the foot of the cross. Lord, set the captives free right now. Lord, you've came to do that. That's your mission statement. Right now, we just ask that you set captives free. Those who are here and those who are watching online, Lord, set captives free. Those who are in prison by this bondage, unforgiveness, to anger, to hatred, to resentment, and right now, we just ask, Lord, that you pour upon all of us, those who are here and those who are watching online, your spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace, the spirit of kindness, gentle-heartedness, generosity. Lord, just, just fill everyone right now with your spirit. Let the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifest the lives of these people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay? So, another thing is, uh, last slide. We're going to be entering Holy Week already next week. And you could also treat Holy Week as Mercy Week. Right? Because... Out of God's mercy, he sent forth his only son to die for us on the cross to save us from our sin and also the consequences of our sin, which is death. Okay? That's why, you know, that's why it says there perfect justice. We were supposed to be there on the cross for our sins, and yet God, Jesus took our place. That's justice. Okay? But also it's perfect mercy and it's one cross. Okay? So the thing is, one of the Beatitudes is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed. Okay? This blessedness, you're just not going to experience that alone in heaven. Even here on earth, you will experience that blessedness. 
Okay? And blessedness is where, where you experience joy, peace, love. You won't be able to experience that if you are not willing to forgive. That's why the beatitude is very true. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Amen.